Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome to the off season. And unfortunately, right after a national championship loss. But I gotta admit, how many other YouTubers actually make it to a national championship and lose? I mean, you always see other YouTubers that win all the time, and yeah, that's fun to win. I, I'm not knocking anybody. But it's also fun to lose because that's the challenge in it. I mean, that's the love for the game. This game is actually great. If you just integrate recruiting restrictions, you put sliders in there, and that's what makes this even more fun than just a regular football game. This is why NCAA football is the greatest game of all time. I mean, even, what has it been, six years since this is released? I mean, it's still the greatest game in my opinion of all time sports games so let's take a look at player stats here in season six going into seven we're losing some guys starting with ray reed remember he stepped up in the big game actually had a really good championship game and unfortunately we could not bring him home with the hardware i mean just what a story that would have been just bringing him a trophy home as he sat behind four years i mean he was a red shirt senior so he sat for four years and finally got his shot in the final three games remember it was like final three or four games when televsky got hurt and he showed up when it mattered most but we couldn't get him the victory sammy baldwin goes over a thousand yards on the season but this is where we struggled we have an all senior offensive line and we gave up so many sacks i mean so many and I wouldn't say I'm happy to see them go because they were great at run blocking, but the pass blocking was definitely lackluster. On the defensive side, Luther Bridges led our team in sacks, but was not anywhere to be found in the national championship. I was actually really surprised. We had no sacks in that game, and that really did hurt us. So hopefully going into this offseason, we will address that. And just looking at our tackle leaders, Michael Cummings had a big year and he's going to be uh, obviously leaving us and that's going to be tough uh, a lot of guys might be leaving us you never know who's going to declare for the draft we'll have to see but Andrew Jordan might return for a senior year I think he will I'm pretty sure he will um, but we are losing some seniors on this defense and you know what we're just going to have to replenish get better and hopefully you know next year or two years from now who knows we'll come home with the hardware so good news in the coaching carousel this is actually the first time i've seen this when coaches really did really well and they still stuck around especially stock still he's been here for two years now usually when you're a top 10 team we're actually we're 12th out of 126 usually your coordinators leave you but this time they stayed I'm actually surprised Sean Lewis stayed and he was number eight in the country in points per game. That's points allowed per game. That's really, really good. That's, that, I mean, I can't believe they actually stayed around, but that's good news for us. And I just want to highlight that our starting offensive coordinator, James Jones, actually has been the head coach at Georgia for the past three years. And look at that turnaround. I mean, he went seven and five in his first year, eight and five in his second year. And then five and seven in his third last year. And actually, no, you know what? He was three and nine. I I'm looking back at what I thought he was, but he's been there for five seasons. He had an eight and five in 2017, which was basically two years ago. And then he actually got a five year extension. I'm surprised to see them extend him, but I'm glad to see our old offensive coordinators doing well. But looking at players leaving, you know me, I don't like to persuade my players to stay because I want it to be a challenge and let players walk. But this one is a tough one, but I gotta let him go. Andrew Jordan is going to declare and he's projected to be a sixth round draft pick. That's interesting to see somebody declare when they're only gonna be a sixth rounder, but I gotta let him walk. I just got to, it's a part of the game. I'm not gonna stop him. And coming off of last season, he did have a decent season, four interceptions. I'm actually surprised this was actually his better year I think out of every year because he had more pass deflections this year than any other season his tackles were lower but that's also because you know he was just on the outside locking guys down I mean that is just simple we didn't allow guys to even get to the edge to get to him to make tackles so we're gonna have to let him go 
but we are losing other guys and let's just sort by overall just to show you what we're losing we're losing our offensive line and our whole offensive line one other starter is not a senior but we're losing michael cummings ray reed josh hemphill both our corners are gone and even our third corner is gone clarence grant is gone our defensive tackle neil bonds joe johnson one of the offensive linemen i mean you just see all the guys we are losing here it's gonna be a rebuild from here i mean i can't lie we're just gonna have to rebuild this team we're losing a ton of seniors and andrew jordan does get drafted in the sixth round but one thing you guys didn't notice denzel knox will be back for his senior year i'm surprised he did not declare he's 98 overall and he didn't declare so let's just look at i want to look at notre dame because you know they did have obviously uh they won a national championship let's just look at some of their guys bryson smiley who had two sacks in the national championship he gets drafted in the first round chris lewis gets drafted in the first round he was a beast i mean that national championship pretty much solidified a first round you know kyle floyd got drafted in the third round i think that's good value for whoever he got drafted to and uh i want to see who else got drafted for them uh see so if any other top guys that made an impact in that game gerard jenkins was pretty good in the acc championship and some other guys i don't really see anybody that really oh yeah ryan tucker actually did make an impact in that game so pretty cool to see them drafted the national champs i also did want to highlight that Corey hayden the quarterback from nc state actually did get drafted in the fifth round i did not think he would be good enough to get drafted but he did and he goes in the fifth i just want to show this quick little funny tidbit here <laughs> we had a transfer request for a 41 overall right guard that's i mean that's pretty comical he's not coming i'm not admitting him so i was hands off in recruiting i let the computer do it all this year and i don't know if that worked out so well they are ranked 61 in the country and that's not a good sign when we're just a team coming off of a national championship bid and we did not come with a victory obviously but we did get prince who is a good defensive end let's just check those guys out so adam prince might be the defensive pass rusher that we might have been looking for he, you see he comes in with 85 finesse moves gonna be 80 overall he's the number two defensive end in the nation jamar smith was an all right four star 63 overall he's probably gonna get redshirted brandon coleman he looks like he looks like a receiver that can't run routes but, but can catch really well and i don't know if that's even valuable because if you can't run routes how can you even play on offense he does look like a decent no i don't even think he looks like he's on defense either i mean maybe he's a running back i, I don't know if i'm looking at this guy i just can't tell because his hit power is up there his man coverage is 70 and his zone coverage 54 i mean you can't do anything with that guy in the secondary he may be a running back though because he does have good break tackling good stiff arm juke move spin move decent carrying i mean he could be i mean he's 6'2 236 he's a he's a big dude uh, i don't know what he's gonna be we'll have to see um and then adam jenkins is a running back he was a bust a four-star bust at that and he's gonna get redshirted i don't know his future on the team so looking at the rest of the guys here, Andre Tremblay is a five-star outside linebacker, the number one in the country, and we are in the race, so I'm thinking about putting all, not all of them, but most of my points on him. Uh, some other guys that did lock us out, RJ Wilson. I don't think we can actually unlock these guys, so I don't know why they're still on our board, but we're gonna remove them. Uh, Joey Thompson is a quarterback, and we will need a quarterback in the future, so we might want to go after him. Justin Lott, he's a pretty good middle linebacker. If you look at his ratings, he is actually pretty decent. Good play recognition, good hit power, good tackling, good block shedding. His zone coverage could use some work, but we're only behind 600 on him. James Jones, another James Jones receiver, number 11 in the country. He is decent. I mean, nothing too great. He's 74, maybe will be a red shirt. We're just looking at some other guys. Melvin Thomas is another defensive end. Ooh, so we just unlocked his ratings and he ended up being really good. Oh, we gotta move him up. I, I gotta admit, we gotta move him up. Uh, move up Justin Lott too. Oh, so we can end this 
pretty well. If we play our cards right, we can end this recruiting season really well. And let's just see what Justin Johnson ends up being. 68 overall, not too great. Uh, let's see other guys we're in the race for. Steve Wilson. Uh, do we have his uh, ratings unlocked? He's a speed guy. Uh, I don't know how good he's going to be, but I like him because he can run routes. But his acceleration is only 79. But I don't care. Let's just move him up. He's going to get the least amount of points of all the top guys we've seen. And then other guys, I'm probably not even going to put points on them. Hopefully they do commit, though. Uh, but I do want to go after these two because we're in a close race with them. So I had to kind of swing for the fences on Andre Tremblay. So he put 7,000 on him. I feel like that just might be a little too much. And because I'm looking at these other guys, Melvin Thomas is really good. And we unlocked his ratings. And I'm not sure if Stanford's going to go all in on him. But I put 2,000 on him. Justin Lott I really like as well. But I didn't even notice. Joey Thompson is the number one quarterback in the nation. So... I need to put some points on him. I can't just put 800 on him. So I'm actually going to lower the points on Justin Lott and put them on Joey Thompson because it. Uh, I just got to get the number one quarterback. It seems like that's the safe thing to do for our program. And I think that even just putting that these points in him will pay off if we do get him to commit. So I think this is what I'm going to go with here. I think Joey Thompson is going to get the second most points. Hopefully Andre does uh, commit with 7,000. We definitely need him. He's going to be an impact player right away, and we'll see. So on to signing day, David Cook ends up, I don't know if he didn't commit or what, but he just decides not to play football. But good news, Joey Thompson ends up committing. And look, we just put exactly the right amount of points on him to get him to commit to us. So we get a five-star, the number one quarterback in the nation. He's only 74 overall, but I'll take it. Unfortunately, Justin Lott commits to Iowa. That one does hurt. I wanted him badly, and that sucks. Steve Wilson does commit to us. We put no points, and he does commit. He had good speed. The other James Jones does not commit to us, though. So that does suck. Another receiver that... We could have had an added to the roster. We lost out on him. But we do get great news. Andre Tremblay commits. And we may have put about 4,000 more points than we needed to. But I'm glad we secured him. The number one outside linebacker in the nation. And to add to that, Melvin Thomas. Remember, we did just scout his points, to be honest. We just did scout his ratings. And we, he ended up being a beast. So 76 overall defensive end. That's definitely going to help. Now we have two freshman defensive ends. And they are going to be a pretty good force together. I'm pretty sure that I might redshirt Melvin Thomas. Because then he'll come into his redshirt freshman year at about 80 something. Low 80s overall. So this was a good haul. So then we shoot up to number 18. Actually number 22 in the country with 18 total signings and just looking at our top three Tremblay Prince and Thompson three five stars and then we have a couple of other guys that I don't really notice here and don't know their names they must have just committed to our school we actually have some one stars here I'm actually surprised to see them there but we end up moving up to number 22 not a bad off season in recruiting I also want to highlight that Notre Dame actually finished number five in the nation so the rich get richer there and then kentucky ends up at number 13 i don't think i've ever seen them in the top 20 so uh, i guess that's pretty cool seeing a team like that in the top 15. so we only had really uh one athlete to kind of assign a position to and look at brandon coleman he's kind of impressive he's got 80 catching 80 spectac 84 catching tra traffic and 57 route running. That low route running does bother me. But he looks like a pretty good offensive player. I don't know exactly what position. But let's just look at the positions. He's going to be an 80 overall running back as a freshman. And then a 78 overall receiver. So let's just see what he is on defense. Not as impressive as offense. So I'm definitely thinking about putting him at running back. Because if I redshirt him and Denzel Knox plays out his senior year, he will be in line to start with, along with Daniel Dunn. 
and I think I'm moving him to running back here. Let's just take a look at our running back depth and looking at Brandon Coleman. He's our second before training, and I think that he's going to be pretty good going in two seasons from now. And just looking at our, our receiving core, we can afford to redshirt a couple of freshmen here and uh, still succeed in the future. I did make a mistake here, and that was adding offensive linemen to the board. Our offensive line is just not impressive. Donovan Taylor moves from fullback back to left guard because we had no option. Xander Ogafor, he's going to be a sophomore on the line. Christian Leak, who was one of our top recruits last year, he gets redshirted now. He's his turn to play. But this time, we mess up at right tackle. And this is where we did fault. We did get a Juco here. But, I mean, we're going to be bad. I mean, we're going to be so bad at right tackle. I can't lie. We'll just see what training results do, but it's not looking good. So, in training, Tulevsky goes up to 82 overall. Pretty good for him. Uh, let's see. He goes up plus three in accuracy, plus one in throw power. Not too bad. Denzel Knox, no surprise, goes up to 99 overall as a running back. He's going to be a monster. Jordan Armstead takes a big leap. 86 overall. He's going into his redshirt sophomore year. Let's see what he's doing well here. 97 catching. 91 spectac. Oh, he's going to have a good year. I Man, he's going to have a really good year. Sammy Baldwin goes up to 87 route running. 81 catch going into his uh, junior season as well. Spencer Davis, who's going to get some playing time now. Mark Harrell is going to be a senior. Remember, we did kind of uh, put him in the, on the back burner. But let's look at right tackle. And Bill Hill, actually, we recruited him as a defensive end, but we had no choice but to move him over to offensive line. And he goes up a little bit, but 60 overall. We're going to be really bad there. Um, let's just look at if anybody else really went up. Okay, so we do have a new starter at right end. I forgot about this, Kai Malik Calgary. And he's going into his sophomore year. He didn't really play much in his freshman year, which makes me question why I didn't redshirt him. I should have just redshirted him. But he's going to be the starter come next year. Jordan Mann goes up to 83 overall. TC Baker goes up quite a bit. We're going to have a new linebacker core a little bit. Clinton Parham is going to be there uh, at left outside. He's a senior, so we're going to have to see him there. Andre Holiday and also Haley Monaga are going to be the two in the middle. James Jackson Jr., he's still there. And at cornerback, well, it's going to be different. JoJo Forrest is going to take over at the number one. And then Elijah Taylor. We forget about the last Taylor brother, Elijah Taylor. Remember, there was uh, JJ Taylor and also the other Taylor. I can't even think of his name. What, what is wrong with me? And then Elijah Taylor now. And these are going to be the top three cornerbacks on our team. It's not looking pretty. Marcus Daniels at safety and then Zamir Hines at the other safety as well. So we do have other corners here, but it looks like they're mostly just JUCOs here. We do have a freshman, 80, 46 overall. I don't know how he even made the team, but we can't even cut anybody. I mean, we didn't even recruit enough people here as we should probably not trust the computer to, to recruit again. But look at this. Shane Hines, who's actually Zamir Hines' little brother, is now on the team backing him up. So that's going to be interesting to see that play out. But, you know, we can't really cut anybody, honestly. So... Let's just move on to the preseason and see what our depth chart is going to look like. So we are going to redshirt Joey Thompson. He was the number one quarterback in the nation, and I'm looking forward to his future. I don't know, you know when he's going to play, but we'll see how Josh Zalewski does this year. Remember, we do have Ike Burns as well. He's a decent quarterback, but I don't see him really outplaying Thompson if he does You know, get the kind of redshirt experience and know the offense. I think just looking at their quarterback ratings, I mean, Tulevsky is by far the best quarterback right now, but Thompson, he has the potential, so we'll see. Brandon Coleman is going to get the red shirt as well. Then Melvin Thomas is going to get the red shirt because he's got Luther Bridges in front of him, so I really don't need to, you know, waste a year of him, so I'm just going to red shirt him. And then, you know, Kaimali Calgary is in front of Prince, and I I don't know. Let's see who's the better defender. Look at Prince. He's got 85 speed as a defensive end. It might be just too tough to hold him back. I think he's just going to go in as a starter. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put Kai, Kai Malik Calgary probably at defensive tackle. 
and see how that works out so that all three of them are on the field because Jordan Mann is going to be the starter there. But it, when we do have four down linemen, I am going to kind of put Calgary in. I kind of like both of them. We'll have to see. Uh, at left outside, nobody to redshirt, really. Tremblay is going to... I'm going to redshirt him because, I mean, think about it. James Jackson Jr. at... He's a senior. He's going to be starting. He's going to have to get out after the passer. Unless we start him at left outside. Maybe we'll have to start him at left outside. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to start him at left outside because he is kind of an impact freshman. He's our best rated one right now. I'm going to start him at left outside, see what he can do rushing the passer. And I think those are all the real big changes that we're even making. So our receiver depth chart looks a little different than years past. Jordan Armstead, Sammy Baldwin, Mark Harrell, and Spencer Davis. But I'm going to put Champagne Green in the slot and then move uh, Mark Harrell down to four. So I like Champagne Green in the slot. So yeah, Prince will start at right end right now. And then I'm actually going to put Kai Malik Calgary at that second defensive tackle spot. Then I'm going to put Tremblay at the left outside once I put James Jackson Jr. back at right outside. And then uh, I think those are real, the only real big changes here going into Season 7. So our schedule is going to look like this in Season 7. UCLA, Cal, who we are going to, we are going to face because, remember, we did move them into the Mountain West and they pretty much took care of business, but... We need to bring them back down to earth there. Michigan and Penn State are going to be our out-of-conference opponents here on the road. Two back-to-back -back Big Ten schools. If we can win that, then we're pretty much in good position. Going into this season, we will play more of kind of a coach mode type of deal. We will maybe spectate some games. We'll see. I don't really know. I think we're just going to kind of uh, just see how it plays out with the computer controlling the uh, controlling this school we will recruit though that's the thing i want to recruit and see what the cpu can do with the gameplay and we'll see how this plays out yes this series is changing formats and it's for the good i am moving into a new series and it's going to be a team builder series but this this series still isn't over i mean there's going to be uh a few episodes still left i want to get to about season 10 so usually an episode will be getting through a season and, and an off season. So we'll have to see. Maybe I'll split that into two. But uh, right now, this is the schedule going into season seven. So looking at who is interested in our school, we have some five-star guys that are interested and in some higher four-star guys as well. But we did add 26 guys to the board. Let's go over them really quick. So while we do have the big impressive guys like Patrick Cade at the top of our board, number one free safety in the nation, we have the number three tight end in Chris Rucker. Our main concerns are offensive line. So this wasn't a good offensive line uh, recruiting class that we are going into, but we need to get the guys that do matter. Like Jared Greer is down here. He's 69 overall, but hopefully if we unlock his ratings, he'll go up. So 72. So yeah, we're going to move him up. And that's our main concern right now is getting that offensive line back up and recruiting some depth here. And you can see some of these guys are busts, but, you know, some of these guys are pretty good. So Adam Miller, he goes up. He's at 71 overall. He's going to move up the board. And that's our main concern besides these top athletes going into this season. So that's going to do it going into Season 7. We are preseason ranked number 18 and we start with the number 16 toughest place to play with a win streak of 20 straight home victories so hopefully that streak does continue and look at that i mean that's the most impressive streak in the nation right now it is definitely well beyond anybody else uh looks like georgia has the second longest there and we're going into this season pretty much rated the same as last year 88 overall that's pretty much what we were, were last year. NC State is still there in the fold, number 13 in the nation. And they are looking to kind of repeat the season they had last year. And, of course, Denzel Knox starts out at the preseason top of the Heisman watch list. And this is going to be a good one. I can't wait to see what the CPU will do in Season 7. 
It's going to be different, but it's going to be fun. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.